Good morning. How is everybody doing? We got some rain happening here. Uh, so hopefully the internet will hold up okay. I had to bribe my dog. Okay, it took me a couple minutes, so I'm a little bit late. Uh, I'm spoiling our dog, evidently my kids tell me. But uh, anyway, we are in Isaiah chapters 31 through 36. And uh, I had to do a quick read of that this morning. And right at the beginning of Isaiah 31, verse 1, is actually our scripture of the day. Uh, and it kicks it right off there. It says, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and who depend on horses. They trust in the number of chariots and in the strength of charioteers. They do not look to the Holy One of Israel, and they do not seek the Lord's help. You know, this reminds me of a verse I may have already shared on here before, but it's Psalm 20, verse 7, where it says, Some trust in horses, horses, some in chariots, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. And so right at the beginning of chapter 31, it's actually the fourth chapter in a row where we're seeing, whoa, 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 okay? And no pun intended about the horses and woes, right? <laughs> but... Um, relying on anything or anyone above God sets us up to fail. And this is because man is fallible and we live in a fallen world and we can't rely on others more than the one who made us. God wants us to be in relationship with him. But so here are the four woes. And so I was just looking back so I kind of see where we've been since we, it's been a week since we were in Isaiah last. Um, so we see in chapter 28, the drunkards of Ephraim, woe to them. We see in chapter 29, to Ariel, woe to Ariel. To chapter 30, to the rebellious children. And then here in 31, for those who go to Egypt for help. So Egypt worshiped false gods. And we remember the judgment that God pronounced on the gods of Egypt with all the plagues. And so for Israel to go back and rely on Egypt for help is a slap in the face. You know, um, God kind of judged that country and he kind of made it clear who the real God is, right? So they can't help us. Um, our flesh doesn't like to be corrected either, right? So we hear these woes and no one says, oh, goody, here's a woe. Let me hear what we have here. No. But God is kind to reveal our waywardness. The woes are calling God's people back to repentance. So Isaiah 31 starts off with that. In Isaiah 32, it speaks of a righteous kingdom. So even though we have these moments of woe, these moments of challenge, God is also pointing us to a hopeful future. Because that's the God he is. He's redemptive, always. And there's always hope in him. He has a purpose. So um, Isaiah 32, it's an allusion to the time when Messiah's kingdom will come. And I love this verse from Isaiah 32, verse 17. It says, and it holds such promise for us, those who pursue righteousness. By the way, good morning, Brianna. It says, the result of righteousness will be at peace. The effect of righteousness will be quiet confidence forever. What a promise. You see, if we seek and pursue righteousness and we are a righteous people, we will have peace. Peace that this world can't take away, no matter what's going on around us in this cray cray world. So God wants his people to have peace, but we can get confused and deceived and distracted from what really matters. We live in hard times, but we are not the first to live in hard times, y'all. There's nothing new underneath the sun. Wickedness and treachery have happened from the beginning. Perhaps verses from Isaiah 33, verses 6 through 8, will kind of give us a little insight. It says, There will be times of security for you, a storehouse of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. It's our treasure, too. But then listen to this. Listen, their warriors cry loudly in the streets, the messengers of peace weep bitterly. The highways are deserted. Travel has ceased. An agreement has been broken. Cities despised and human life disregarded. 
Don't we live in that time right now where human life is disregarded? Don't we see this today? Children aborted for convenience and in the name of choice that people think they have a right to make. We are not the author of life. We are not the taker of it either. We are not. And that is judged by God. And chapter 34 is also the judgment of God. But you know the good news is our God is a righteous judge. He doesn't truly give us what we deserve. He gives mercy to those who will accept his incredible gift of grace and mercy. And in chapter 35, we see a glorious future again. You see how we keep this pattern of a rebuke and a promise, a rebuke and restoration. Uh, it's the wilderness of Judah coming to life again. So God's judgment and punishment are always redemptive. He's good. He's inviting us back to himself to know him. He's delivering us from the cancer of sin that surrounds us. In chapter 36 here, we're gonna, I'm going to read just a few verses from there because it's, ugh, you know, I probably should have just hung on chapter 36 the whole time. It's just so good today. Hey, good morning, Todd. Good to have you with us. In chapter 36, in the 14th year, this is beginning at verse 1, king of King Hezekiah, King Sennacherib of Assyria attract all, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. First off, you got to look at this guy's name, okay? I've been on a diet for a month, Sennacherib. I mean, I'm thinking, <laughs> let's have some ribs. Okay, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. But if we look here, we see that Sennacherib is trying to provoke King Hezekiah. He's saying something really out loud so all the people are provoked to fear and he is taunting them. Don't even say you rely on God. You know, it says, why are you now, who are you now relying on that you have rebelled against me? Look, you're relying on Egypt. So even a, a neighboring nation is saying, hey, I recognize your sin problem. That splintered reed of a staff that will pierce the hand of anyone who grabs it. This is how Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is to all who rely on him. Suppose you say to me, we rely on the Lord our God. Isn't he the one whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed? Boom. Okay, so people can see sin in our lives. They can see double-mindedness. But wait till next week, you guys. I'm going to leave you with that because there's good news coming. Because even when we get double-minded, even when we start to rely on this world or on anything else, God can bring his people back to rely on him. Because that's where our victory lies. Not relying on anyone else or any circumstance. Because relying on anything or anyone above God sets us up to fail. So next week as we continue in Isaiah, we're going to see what Hezekiah does. You guys, go with God. Rely on him. He is our living hope. Take care. Bye-bye.